Namo Shakya Munaye Buddhaya, dear respected Thay, dear brothers, dear sisters, dear beloved Sangha. Can you hear me okay? Louder? What about now? Is it better? Okay. Today is August 16 in the year 2020. We are in the Rising Time Meditation Hall and Magnolia Grove Monastery. This is uh, my second time having a chance to share in front of the Sangha this year. The last time I shared was in April, and time flies so quickly. In English, there is this saying that time flies fast when you are having fun. And I hope all of us are having fun so far in the year 2020. Uh, very soon, we will start our annual three-month retreat. I'd like to start off by sharing with you a story. 20 years ago, a 16-year-old girl experienced love for the first time in her life. She was new to this experience. She didn't know what would happen. She didn't know the feeling of longing, of missing, of wanting to be loved until she reached the age of 16. Perhaps there are some people who experience this at the age of 20, 25. But sweet 16 is a good opportunity to experience. Like I share, that this girl did not know what she was getting herself into until she got into it. Um, it was joyful. It was happy. It was memorable. It was fulfilling because she was cared for. She was loved by the boy that she had a crush on. And then at the age of 17, love didn't go as planned it, so she experienced her first breakup. It was sad. It was lonely. It was painful. Perhaps it was embarrassing. In this breakup, there was a lot of loneliness, confusion, and doubts. Doubts about her own ability, doubts about her confidence, doubts about life, and a lot of questions she had in her heart. Why did love have to end this way? Why is there a breakup in a relationship when things don't work out well? Twenty years later, this girl is here, sitting in front of all of you, sharing about her experience of wake up after breakup. So today, my Dharma talk is to celebrate 20th year anniversary of being in love for the first time and experience breakup for the first time. And as a monastic, what have I learned from this breakup and many more other breakup to come or have come in my monastic life? So the theme for this Dharma talk is we can wake up after breakup. Mm. To prepare for this Dharma talk last night, I look up the meaning of the word up in the dictionary. And it's very interesting. I went there and I look up in the dictionary words that start with the word up. And do you know that the word up, it means that to, to be in a higher position or to be in a higher value to be in a higher position or to be in a higher value? To arrive at a higher position or at a higher value? So the word up is a very beautiful word. So please allow me to write this on the board.
Anyone here seen the movie Up? Who? Oh, could you raise your hand? Ah, if you haven't seen it, maybe tonight we can watch the movie Up together. It's a very good movie. Up to in or at a higher position or value. It's a very optimistic and positive word, but to experience breakup is excruciating, it's painful. How many of us here have experienced breakup? Romantic breakup? Friendship breakup, workplace breakup, aspiration breakup, community breakup. Raise your hand. Okay, so I'm not the only one. <laughs> and so, and then, like I shared, I also went on the dictionary and looked up the words that start with up. And you know, they are mostly general, very positive. For example, upbeat. I feel upbeat, uplifting, mm, right? So, upbeat, uplifting. Upmost, which means sự nâng cao, trình độ, tinh thần hoặc tâm hồn. Upmost, I learned this word last night. Update. We all want to know what is new, right? We want to know new update. So it's a positive word. Upkeep. Another beautiful word that starts with up is upraise. We encourage one another. We motivate one another. And of course, this is a word that we often hear, upright. Upraise, upright. Upward. And you know, I smile a little bit, and memories came up with the next two words, upset and uptight. <laughs> they're not positive, but they're real. It starts with up, right? Upset, nine, uptight. So, seven out of nine words that start with the word up and they are positive. Upset and uptight, they are also part of it. And maybe this could be a reason why I'm guessing that we have the movement called Wake Up for the young people. Mm. So these are the words that start with the word up. Now, what about the words that end with the word up? that are positive. This is how we can wake up after the breakup. These are my crazy ideas. One is that we have to look up, right? After breakup, look up. Two, show up. Three, makeup. Are you thinking of putting mascara, lipsticks? Is that what you are thinking? Makeup. Four, cheer up. Five, sit up. And of course, six, wake up.
get up, <laughs> get up, okay. Any other words that end with uh, up that are positive, brothers and sisters? Can you help me? Speak up. Oh, that's a, that's a good one. We have to be careful though, right? <laughs> Shake it up. Shake it up, you say? Brother Dowhen, you have one? Soup? Soup? Like, like soup? That, yeah? <laughs> oh, just ignore it, okay. Any other words that end with up that are positive, brothers and sisters? Stand up. Clean up. <laughs> Are you the next work coordinator, Sister Tanyu? Clean up. Stand up. Okay, this is good. This is good enough. <clears throat> Today, because of the time limit, I will only share the few ups. I will share about look up, show up, make up. And this is how we can reach to wake up after the breakup. If we are able to do all these nine, for sure our destination will be at the wake-up place. But even if we do just three, it will also help us to arrive at the wake-up. And don't think that we have to invest one year or two years in doing this. And then in order for us to arrive at wake-up, no like the sutra, the discourse on four, uh, four establishments of mindfulness, the Buddha say, oh, don't think it takes seven years. It can even take up to only seven days if we are really diligent, put all our heart into practice, then we will get what we need. The opposite of the word look up is look down. Right? And this is my own experience. When I experienced my first breakup as a teenager, is that I often look down at myself. What have I done? How come he doesn't love me anymore? Am I not beautiful enough? Is it my height that he dumped me? <laughs> is it because I'm so short? What is it? And entering the monasteries, there are some sisters, there were some sisters. I had a very beautiful relationship in the beginning, in the middle, and in the end, a breakup. Mm. And I judge myself. I lose faith in my confidence. And then, not only do I look down at myself, I also look down at my sisters. And so I learned that the practice of looking up at my own self, at the people that I think cause me difficulties, is the reason of this breakup, continue to look up. Mm. Look up here also means that don't look at our phone or our electri electronic devices all the time after the breakup, because we all have the tendency to do that, to cover up our loneliness, to consume things, to read books, to listen to music, to watch movies, so we always look down. So look down here has two meanings looking down at our electronic devices, looking down at ourselves, looking down at others. And who is the person that gets affected by all of this? Is here. Is this heart? Is this mind? Is this kidney? Is this liver? Is this one? And so, when we think of the word breakup, many people think it's a romantic relationship. But in the dictionary, it didn't say romantic relationship. 
This is a definition in the dictionary. Breakup is a coming apart. It is the termination or disintegration of a relationship between persons or nations. Right? Mm. It's difficult to wake up after a breakup. Wake up here, I mean, you go to sleep at night and then you wake up the next day. I remember when I was 17, I, I was so happy to say that I broke up with my boyfriend. This ego was so high. But I did not say that we decided to break up. I went around and I said, I decided to break up with him. <laughs> it made me sound like I'm a good guy. He's the bad guy. He must have done something wrong. That's why I broke up with him. It was me who made the decision. You see, this is a mistake in many romantic relationships. Because after the breakup, we carry on that grudge. We look down at that person and we want to show people that we are the good guy. That's why I went with my, to my friends and I say, I broke up with my boyfriend. Not we decided to break up. That was my first mistake. And waking up the next morning, I felt so free. It was kind of a weird feeling. Why did I feel free after a breakup? But then a week later, it was dreadful. <laughs> it was so dreadful, I could not get out of bed. I cried. I felt so lonely. I went to school. I saw him walking from a distance. I could only swallow my saliva and can't do anything else. I thought of the memories, you know. I walk and I just look down on the floor and I just walk. I couldn't put my face up to look up at my friends because it was embarrassing. Come on, just last month, he and I, we were holding hands walking in the hallway. He carried my books. Oh, I was so happy walking next to a very handsome guy. And now, look at me. Pitiful. Yeah. I lost my confidence after the breakup. I don't know if you feel the same, but I felt the same. I felt that way. Of course, it takes me 20 years to be able to open to share this. It's not easy. But I think what's there to hide? Why do we have to hide our own weaknesses? Like sister, one sister shared that we can learn to speak up after a breakup. And this is a way for us to heal our heart. And now when I share about this, I'm not reliving the past. I share it because I have found a way out of my breakup. And I ask for your support. And just like many other young people, I started to listen to sad, broke, hard, sad breakup songs after my breakup. He gave me a CD by Brian McKnight, and in there it has a song, 6812. When I was in love, this song was so sad. What a sad song, I say. But after the breakup, I thought, wow, this is such a wonderful song. So it goes like this. It's been six months, eight days, 12 hours since you went away. I miss you so much, and I don't know what to say. I should be over you. I should know better. But that is not the case. 
It's been six months, eight days, 12 hours since you went away. And this is how naive this young girl was. She sat there and she said to herself, when it is six months, eight days, 12 hours after the breakup, she will listen to this song. <laughs> Can you believe it? That was me back then. Because I felt that song was comforting, was able to express how I felt. I was not able to share my breakup with anyone, not to my parents, because I was hiding my relationship from them. <laughs> I wanted to let them know that I'm a good girl. Don't worry, mom. I'm not in love. <laughs> See, that is my second mistake. I could not share with my parents. Mm. But after a while, I learned that. Look, look at a picture of a young girl who had, um, you know how her lips, she was born with a, uh, what is it called? Hair. Hair lip, where it split, yeah. And she was smiling so beautifully, and I'm sitting there, at home, crying after this breakup, and I thought to myself, this is nonsense. Smile. And that was my awakened moment after the breakup. Mm -hmm. So if we have the tendency to look down on ourselves after a breakup, look up. Use our eyes first. Look up at the trees. Look up to see our brothers or sisters. Look in the mirror to see our own self and smile. And then we use our mind to look up. Once we are able to do that, our heart will be able to heal. If we continue to look down, our energy will continue to be down, and we will not be able to go far because our immune system will be very weak if we continue to look down at ourselves and other people. The second thing is to show up. Don't shut off. Show up versus shut off. This is a tendency. After my sister and I having some difficulty, I want to shut my heart from other people. I want to shut off everybody. Don't approach me, please. Don't talk to me, please. I don't feel like drinking tea. I don't want to go to Sardis Lake. <laughs> See, we're shutting ourselves off from other people after we experience a breakup, which is very common. This is why encourage ourselves to show up. I continued to go to school. I didn't miss any of my class after the breakup. I missed my class when I was in love. I skipped school to hang out with him. But after the breakup, I did not skip school. I show up to the class. And I'm practicing this in the Sangha when I have difficulty, a breakup with my sister, I go to the schedule. I don't sit in my room to take care of my mental formations, to heal the wounded child. No. Get up, Sister Boingham, go to the schedule. Because this is a way that I can be at least be present and also feel the presence of other people. Shutting my door, shutting my heart. If I'm not careful, I will drown in my suffering, in my breakup. Continue to do what we love. 
and continue to love what we do. If someone asks me, why am I still a monastic? Give me one answer, one sentence. Why are you still a monastic? This is my answer. I love what I do, and I do what I love. That's it. Mm -hmm. I just recently experienced a breakup with some of my sisters here. It's not pleasant. It's not easy. It's a different kind of pain. However, I continue to show up. Because the presence of that person at a particular place at a certain time should not and could not be an obstacle for me. Unless that person is a threat to my safety. It is so important that we train our mind so that when we know that this person and I, we're having this internal conflict, these difficulties, and we're sitting there laughing with other sisters, drinking tea with other people, with our friends, and suddenly this person comes in, and immediately we freeze ourselves up. Please don't do that to yourself. Don't let the presence of anyone be an obstacle to our peace, to our compassion, and especially to our positive thinking. Show up, don't shut off. And of course, this grudge is inside. But now that we are adults, now that we have some experience in life, and if we say this, and if we let this thought continue to play in our head, saying that, I don't want to be there because that person is there, that's childish. Because we are at the stage where we can even protect our own self, to take care of our own self. So why should we let one person be an obstacle for us to continue to do the things that we love and for us to love what we do like to do? Third one. Makeup. Mm -hmm. The word makeup here can mean different meaning. After a young girl experienced breakup, she felt that she is not attractive enough. She felt she's not beautiful enough. She would put on a lot of mascara, lipsticks. What is it called for the face? What is it called? I don't know. I've been a nun for 15 years. <laughs> I don't remember these terminologies. <laughs> but you know the foundation for the face, right? Yeah. She would like to go out and have a new boyfriend. And this is my third mistake. I was too rushed to find someone to replace him when I knew that my heart was not healed. When I really didn't yet know how to love myself and take care of myself yet. That was the only makeup that I knew. I did not know another kind of makeup. After 20 years, I learned that there is another kind of makeup. Makeup for what happened in the past. Make up for the mistakes that you made in the past. Make up for the negative thoughts you had in the past. And taste teaching, to summarize this makeup with taste teaching is this. 
We can heal. We can transform the past by living mindfully and happily in the present moment. Basically, it just means makeup. Mm. In the past, after the breakup, every time I pass by a park, I pass by a restaurant, I would think about the memories I had with him. I was living in the past. I was not present in the here and in the now. I remember one day I was walking with my mom in the park. She was walking right here, and I was walking next to her. And from the distance, there was this bench, and that was the bench where my first love and I we sat for a few times. We met there. We went for a walk. We sat down. We held hands. We talked. And so on that day, as I was walking with my mom, only those images came up, and I say to myself, "Sister Boingim, who are you walking with right now?" And I think the Buddha inside was saying, "You are walking with your mom." And so I went to her, I held her hand, and I was leaving. In the present moment, at that moment, I was making up for the mistake I made in the past. Making up here doesn't mean fake. Make up here has three meanings: beautify your face with cosmetic. Make up is to, you know, I just I'm just making it up. It's not real. Or make up is to. Kind of like reconcile. Relieve differently in the present moment, so that your mistakes in the past can be transformed. Some of us are not so lucky. To be able to make up, we experience meltdown. Mm. Meltdown is a state where we don't want to do anything, where we just want to stay in a room all day, put on that blanket, or walk as if you are not living in the present moment. The mind is filled with negative thoughts. That's meltdown. And many young people out there that we have a chance to encounter with, they experience such meltdown after a breakup. And many of them are seeking, are asking for help. So that they are able to live, they can live again. So that they can stand up, so that they can clean up their room, so that they can get up in the morning, so that they can be motivated to sit up in sitting meditation. Yeah, these these verbs are so easy to write, right? <laughs> so easy to write. So easy to read, so easy to say. But how many of us can actually do it after a breakup? Some takes longer, some takes shorter. It was ten days ago. Our neighbor, auntie, she brought us three. Big baskets of pears. She and I we had an intimate conversation down at the picnic table, and I shared with her auntie. The next time I give a Dharma talk, I will share on the topic wake up after breakup. 
And she was smiling. She was like, interesting. <laughs> and I asked her, have you ever experienced a breakup, auntie? She said, no. I met my husband when I was 16. I was married to him for 58 years. I never experienced a breakup. And she's a rare one, right? Her husband bought her a car back in 1960. She still keep it in her garage. So if next time we have a chance to visit her home, you will see the car still parked there. She drives her husband's truck. She has her own red Mustang. And she's 82 years old. <laughs> I ask her, losing your husband is kind of like a breakup, don't you think? She said yes, in a way. She felt lost. She felt sad. But in her, there's no anger. That's the difference. It's an, it's an involuntarily breakup. And she said that in the relationship, there's no me or I. There's only us and we. And I asked her, what is the secret to your marriage? She said, he often work, uh, had to work far. <laughs> so he would travel to another state to work, and she'd just stay home and take care of the house and the children. And she said that is one of the secrets to the relationship, is that they give each other space. And most importantly, they trust one another. Mm. Her grandchild shared with her friends that, you know, I have two grandmoms. Both of them are in the 80s. Both of them lost their husband at the same time. One grandmom is curled up like a ball retreat herself. She does not interact with anyone. The other one is driving a red Mustang. And the one that is driving a red Mustang, she is full of life. She is so healthy. And there's no sign of dementia in her. I asked her, what did your husband say to you before he passed away? And this is what he said. I say to her, now do you feel that perhaps it's good that he passed away before you, when you pass away before him? What did he say to you? He said, I know you can do without me, but I can't without you. And when she heard this, it was panicking for her. But he knew clearly that if she dies before him, he will not be able to take care of himself. So it's good that he goes away before her. It's a beautiful breakup. Hmm. This breakup doesn't end in, with resentment. And this is an advice from an 82-year-old lady. We got to keep active after I break up. Hang out with our friends. Yes, go drink tea with our brothers and sisters, even if that person is there. Invite that person for a cup of tea respectfully with our two hands. Look at him and her in the eyes. 
Why not? Make up. There were times you didn't want to look at that person in the eyes. Now, make up. <laughs> Last one. And uh, when we when we practice make up, we are being grateful. Being grateful is so crucial after a breakup. Even if that person has said something very painful, full of wrong perception, negative thinking toward ourselves, continue to be grateful to that person. Because at least that person cooked a meal for us, fill up that water, clean the restroom, take us to the doctor. Mm -hmm. Don't leave ungratefully with someone we have difficulty with. I think that is the saddest part of a person if we are ungrateful to someone that we live with, even if this person causes difficulty to us. I often share that I'm very grateful to my ex because he never physically hit me emotionally abuse me, mm. never ask me, do you want to smoke? Do you want to drink? Never. And for this, I am always grateful to him. And for my brothers and sisters I have difficulty with, this is what I remind myself. Don't be so quick to dislike that person, to shut off that person from your life, because perhaps one day this person will help you out of danger. Always keep that in my heart. Even right after what he or she say is very painful, I keep that in my heart so that I don't look at that person with the eyes of, of dislike or of resentment. And wake up. It has been uh, quite difficult for me the last three weeks. Some of you might know. It's my own thoughts. And I remember there was one afternoon, my alarm was on, and I didn't feel like getting up. I said, just sleep. It's okay if you don't go to activity. But then I remember, you know, I'm gonna give a Dharma talk based on this topic. So I have to practice it. Get up, Sister Boyneum. <laughs> I got up, and I showed off the activity. And I won the battle against myself. And it was nice. I took out the blanket and said, get up. Of course, with love, with a smile, get up. So it was easy to wake up. Wake up is an awakening moment that we have in our daily life that we all will have, we all can have, and we all had. And it comes when we least expect it. I have heard one sister say that 
I've been living in the, I've been practicing for 14 years, and there are some questions that people ask me, and I don't know the answers to. And it has been so long since I haven't had any insights. And I say to her, insights you cannot go look for. The more that we look for insights, the less they would come. If we don't have insights yet, apply Tay's insights. Impl apply our brother's and our sister's insight. There are insights of other people that we can apply and that can help us to wake up. And so, if after the breakup, we are so rushed to go and reconcile, it's not going to work. Just let it be natural. I was longing every time the phone rang that he would call me. I ran very fast to the telephone, looked for the caller ID. Is it his name? I wanted to reconcile. I wanted to have hope that perhaps we can still get back together. But even if there was a chance, it will soon end up in a breakup. Because I haven't changed, he hasn't changed. I still don't know how to take care of myself. And now if I'm having difficulty, with a sister or with a brother, I am not too rushed to go and reconcile. Before, it was very difficult for me to remain silent. There was this heaviness in the heart. But now, I remain silent, but there's peace, because that's what I want for myself. Mm. And if I see a sister sitting there, walking by, that brother sitting there, walking by, and this feeling of irritation comes up, automatically this question would come up in my head. Is she or he doing anything right now to me? And the, question, and the answer is no. Then why should I feel irritated? Why? Why am I continue to give myself second arrow after a breakup? Enough is enough. And this has helped me a lot. I started to see this five years ago, and it still worked for me. I don't know if it worked for you, but it worked for me. And I hope that it will continue to work for me. So dear Sangha, living with other people, whether with monastics, when we go home with our family, with the lay friends, sooner or later, we will experience some kind of breakup. That is the fact. So while in a relationship, Save some love for ourselves. Save some compassion for ourselves. Don't give all. Because once we give all and when, once we lost it, we started to feel some kind of doubts. So learn to love ourselves first. Mm. Sure, this Dharma talk sounds childish. We all know this already. It sounds completely childish for many of us. But in each one of us, there's a child. That child in me was a teenager. That child in me is a 36-year-old. And I will continue to be that child. And there will be times I will continue to be childish. So I invite all of us 
If next time we experience a breakup, look up, show up, make up, and wake up. Thank you, brothers, sisters, for your listening. <laughs>